Hi, I'm David Laird, and I'd like to talk to you briefly about what biochar is. Uh, biochar is pyrolyzed biomass. Now that means by biomass, I'm talking about corn stalks, I'm talking about wood chips, I'm talking about manure, uh, any form of organic material. And when you pyrolyze it, basically what that means is you put it in an oven and you heat it in the absence of oxygen. So you're keeping the air out. If you let the air in, it's going to burn. But if you keep the oxygen out, it doesn't burn, it pyrolyzes. This means it thermally decomposes into a gas, a liquid, and a solid. And the solid is the char part. It's basically a charcoal-like material. The difference between charcoal and biochar is that biochar is produced with the intent of using it as a soil amendment, to incorporate it in the soil, to sequester carbon, to enhance soil quality, to recycle nutrients, and these are some of the potential benefits that could come from biochar. It sequesters carbon because the carbon that's in the biomass, for example in grass, comes from the atmosphere originally as carbon dioxide, and through the process of photosynthesis it's captured into the biomass. When you let that biomass decompose on the ground naturally, in a few months it's, the carbon in it is returned to the atmosphere. But if you pyrolyze it and turn it into a char-like material, the carbon becomes chemically much more stable and will persist in the soil for hundreds or even thousands of years. So on net, you're pulling carbon out of the atmosphere and sequestering it in the soil. It improves soil quality because the char has a lot of surface area. It's got a lot of pores in it. And it's capable of holding water and holding nutrients. And it's a light material. It's very low density. And that tends to fluff up the soil and increase the pore space in the soil and make it a better rooting environment for plants. Use of chars on soils, however, is highly variable for a couple of reasons. Because there's many different types of chars, there's many different types of soils, and there's many different types of plants. And it's a very complex system when you put all of these together. So what we've found is that putting chars on poor quality soils, such as a sandy soil that has a low water holding capacity, low nutrient holding capacity, putting char on a sandy soil improves the ability of that soil to support plant life because it helps hold water and nutrients. Putting water in an eroded soil in which much of the organic matter, rich surface soil, has been eroded away can also help improve soil quality and soil production. There's a lot that we need to know about biochar before it scales up to a large-scale industry and really before it becomes widely used by farmers or even by backyard gardeners. We don't understand how biochar interacts with different soils, different types of plants, and in different climates. And we see nice yield responses in one place, one time, one soil, but at another location, another time, we don't see any response at all. And in some cases, we've seen actually decreased crop yields. We need to build models that will allow us to be able to predict ahead of time whether a particular type of char on a particular application, a particular soil, is going to have a positive, neutral, or negative effect. And this kind of research is ongoing, but it's going to take a few years before we fully sort out all of the variables and all of the challenges in order to make biochar an economically viable industry and a usable product for backyard gardeners.